This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. In addition to Honey Badger's great error monitoring service, they also have an uptime monitoring for web developers. And Honey Badger has recently shipped an update that allows for public status pages that can help communicate outages to your customers. In addition to your uptime monitoring, Honey Badger now monitors your SSL certificates. And Honey Badger now has actions which will allow you to do bulk updates to all your errors, or you can set defaults for incoming errors. In this episode, we're going to have a look at something pretty cool that was just released a few weeks ago, and it is the View Transition API. So if I click on one of these links, it's going to take us to the show page, but there is an animation that occurs. However, that was a bit too fast, so let's go into our dev tools and the animations, and let's slow it down a bit. And if we go back to our list of movies, and if we hit show again, we'll then see that transition happen a lot slower. And the way that this basically works is that it's going to take a picture of the before page, and it's going to take a picture of the rendered after page. And then it'll create a transition between the two. However, with the View Transition API, you can tag images or text to be in the old place and also in the new render. And so by doing that kind of grouping, when we transition from one page to another, it then does that kind of animation. And a lot of this animation can be configured through CSS. However, it is important to note that the support for this is pretty lacking right now. Basically, the only places that it's going to support is Chrome and Microsoft Edge. However, those do have a pretty big share of the global market. And it first came into support for Google Chrome back in March of 2023. And hopefully there'll be better adoption for this as time goes. However, I doubt we're going to see support for this in Safari or Safari on iOS for a long time. But regardless, in this episode, we're going to look at the View Transition API, how we can set it up in a Rails application. And to interact with this, we're going to create a stimulus controller. 